Next to you, Starstruck. An internet apartment neighbor's famous, famous, fake dating alternate universe fan fiction. Chapter 14. I want to hear it all. Olia slams down the magazine on her countertop. It is a cover. Its cover is a picture from the interview that Marinette and Adrian did, and Marinette smiles at it. She's proud of how she did, especially now looking back at it. And there's a slight tingle across her hand from which Adrian had held for most of the dirtation of the interview. I mean, the interview was uncut, so... Marinette trails off teasingly. Alia scowls at her, not wanting to play the game. Don't do that, she says, trying to sound strict but loses the, her edge when she giggles at the end. Don't do that to me. Don't act like that. We have been friends since college. This is the most real drama I've gotten since year 10, Alia says, leaning in. So spill, because I know that you want to talk about it too. Especially because about Chloe Bourgeois because, wow, I cannot believe that happened. And that sure wasn't televised. Okay, okay, Marinette laughs and nods. She surrenders with a chuckle. The interview went super well. Adrian calmed me down before because I was nervous, but it went well, she explains. Alia snorts. You! Nervous. Wow, I cannot believe Adrian had to bring that down, she says sarcastically. Marinette rolls her eyes playfully and throws a napkin at her friend. Alia ducks with a laugh. Anyway, Marinette says sharply, Nadia was actually quite nice. She definitely wanted gossip from me, but she wasn't too pushy. She really wanted to know how we met and all of that, and luckily, Everyone bought the story. Honestly, it could have gone way worse if it was with Lila Rossi, which apparently nearly every celebrity in the world has had a bad experience with her. Like a directly bad experience, Marina explains. Alia cackles. I mean, <laughs> I'm sure if I met her, I'd count that as a bad direct experience. That woman is nasty. She shudders. And no, I don't want to hear about anything that actually happened during the interview. I mean, excuse me, I watched the entire thing to see if you meet, if you were going to have an entire panic attack on screen and I needed to drive to come pick you up. Oh, you want to make your first TV appearance? Marinette teases. Alia scowls playfully. No. I need to be a good best friend. Marinette turns away quickly and puts on an over-dramatized, skeptical look on her face. Alia gasps and throws the previously tossed napkin right back at her. Marinette fends pain and pulls her shoulder where it hit her. She pretends to wince and crumble down in pain as if she had been stabbed while Alia fakes sobs of sorrow. It's hilarious and Marinette can admit that they are a dramatic duo. But she always had loved it. It was fun. You are awful, Alia huffs. That's why you love me, Marinette cackles in a sing-song voice. Okay, but really, it went great. Or as great as it can go. I was actually a lot more nervous to meet Chloe than I was to meet Nadia. Because Nadia has to be nice and at least act like she likes me. Chloe has no obligation and, well, look at her reputation, Marinette trails off. Alia nods seriously. I understand that, she says. Like you had some kind of metaphorical armor with Nadia because she was on TV and she was trying to get you to trust her and had to look purpose perfect and she had to look nice and be friendly and like say good things, you know? And Chloe Bourgeois seems, um, I don't even know what to say, spiteful, terrifying, rude, judgy, all of the above, 
she sighs. And her mother. Her mother seems to be an interesting one. Yeah, and I got confirmation from her. Not just the magazine. But meeting Chloe didn't go as badly as I thought it would. Honestly, I, I don't love her. She was, she was judgy and harsh, and she gave off a really weird icy vibe. But she ended up being nice. Nicest. Marinette winces. But like, she didn't start shouting at me or anything. It all just felt like a unnecessary test, but you know, I guess she has good reason to be worried because I'm sure there's a ton of gold diggers out there who are surely trying to claw their way into Adrian of all people and she, she just wants to protect them in her own standoffish way. Marinette sighs. Alia lets out a groan. Okay, see, now you're making me feel bad for yapping about her all these years, she says with a little laugh. I thought she was self-centered. Well, she is self-important, Marinette admits. She was reprimanding Adrian about his apartment. Ah, uh, that makes me feel a bit better. Alia hums and Marinette laughs and playfully rolls her eyes. She did tell me that she was impressed with my stage appearance, Marinette says with a mischievous grin. I feel bad again. That was the point. Alia Selzer sends her the most evil eye that she could muster, but you know, after having Chloe Bourgeois, of all people, stare her down and critique her appearance, it didn't faze her too much. Well, I'm glad it went well too, she said begrudgingly. Me too, Marinette replies with a smile and laugh. It could have definitely gone so badly. I was expecting it to go really badly. I thought that she was going to hate me and tear me apart and then ruin everything by telling everything to the reporters and stuff, but I guess I was being too dramatic all for nothing. Alia snorts and raises her brows as if to say, you dramatic. Huh, no way. Marinette promptly ignores her. Honestly, I kind of wanted to back out of it, but Adrian was getting just more and more excited about it as the week went on, and he said that he hadn't seen her in months and months, and I just, I didn't want to crush his feelings, Marinette says with a sigh. A mischievous smile makes its way onto Ollie's face. She leans into the counter and sends deadly eyes at her. Marinette stares back. Huh, Ollie says with almost a laugh in her voice. Do you tell me more now, she says. Marinette crinkles her brows in confusion. About how I was nervous to meet Chloe, or... Ollie shakes her head and clicks her tongue. No, no, no. I, I don't mean that. I don't care about that anymore. I mean, tell me more about how you'd hate to see Adrian sad. Alia probes at her. Marinette blushes, and she knows. She just knows that Alia is onto her. She looks away from her friend's prying eyes, stammering and stuttering the entire time. It's... no, it... it well, uh, it's nothing. Marinette squeaks, Alia, but Alia knows her way too well to believe that flimsy lie. Really? You mean to tell me that you don't have a crush on your fake boyfriend, aka Adrian Agress, supermodel, and your childhood crush, an actually genuinely nice and kind person? You have no feelings for him whatsoever. Are you trying to tell me that? She leans in even more. Marinette gulps. Okay, okay. Her face is burning. You caught me. I'm okay. I'm not saying that, but like, maybe I kind of like him. She mutters. Alia cries out with excitement. Aha! I knew it. I knew you'd fall in love with him. Alia screeches. She jumps out and performs a very funny looking victory dance. Marinette chokes on her own laughter before getting up to hold Alia's arms down. 
you know, before she breaks something in her house because she was going spastic. Alia stops, but she's smirking and looks very, very proud. Marinette laughs and rolls her eyes playfully. No, it's not like I'm in love with him or anything, Marinette scrambles to explain. Yet, but anyways, it's a small crush. Alia flips her brow at the... At the... It's very small. Yet. But like, please don't tell him. He has no idea. And I just decided that it would be better if I didn't tell him. She begs. Alia gives her an incredulous look. Well, why don't you want to tell him? You're literally dating him. I mean, fake dating, but still. Dating nonetheless because everyone thinks you're actually dating. Like, everyone. The world. He's famous. It literally, everyone thinks you're actually dating. And he's obviously content with being your boyfriend. You could tell him. And then, bam! Real relationship. Alia points out. Marinette sighs. Yeah, I, I know, but I don't know. I can't tell if he's just being nice or he actually feels something for me, she explains. Sometimes I feel like he's actually flirting with me. It makes me all happy and nervous. And then I remember that he was never really around anyone his age as a kid. He just does whatever he thinks he should be doing and a lot of those are things he learned from the media or dramatic actors or movies who get married and divorced in like two months. A lot of the really nice thing he does, he does on camera when everyone thinks about being all coupley, it's literally him just being normal and just not realizing that those actions mean something. Alia sighs and buries her face in her hands. Alia pats her shoulder comfortingly. But think about it. He thinks that those are normal, but he also thinks that those are romantic gestures. That's why he does it on camera. That could mean he likes you if he's doing it all the time, like when there's no one else around, she points out. Marinette looks at her with a tired and pained expression. Is it even worth the effort and possible embarrassment to take it that way? To always take it that way, that they like me, Marinette says, playing devil's advocate. Already, she panics about their fake date. Dates. Whenever he puts his hand on top of hers in public to show everyone that, hey, they are a happy and real couple, Marinette's brain shuts down for a full two minutes, and it is embarrassing for Adrian to poke at her while not knowing exactly why it happens. More than once, Adrian has kissed her on the cheek and left her a blushing and stuttering mess. They hadn't even kissed on the lips, and she was freaking out over it. Far too many pictures of those kiss on the cheek instances or similar were already on the internet, and it made her very, very embarrassed. Julika, of all people, loved sending her those magazine covers. She thought they were really funny. Adrian also really likes to hold her hand, and when he does, Marinette once again is 13, nervous about her first kiss. And they hadn't even kissed yet! Despite that, Marinette is always nervous and always thinking about it. What on earth is she gonna do when it happens? Okay, okay, you're kind of right. You can't always think like that, Ollie admits, and Marinette throws her a playful smirk. One that says, I told you so. But don't throw out that possibility either, she says. Marinette shrugs and responds. How about this? Adrian is nice, and we know he's comfortable with you, and that there is a chance that he likes you in a romantic way. But if not, that's okay, because he's still a good friend to you, Alia states. Marinette nods. That doesn't sound too bad. She admits. Alia grins madly and hugs her side. Great. Now, keep talking to me about Chloe. Marinette bites her lip nervously and Alia's expression drops at that sight. What? What happened? Did she do something wrong? Did she do- What did she do? I will fight her. I swear to God. I will fight her. Alia demands hurriedly. 
Marinette shakes her head. No, no. Chloe didn't do anything wrong. I swear, just, just some snippy things. Yeah, but not like mean or bad. It's just, she, she told me something that kind of got me worried. Marinette bites her lip nervously and all the emotions for her to explain. She told me about a person of interest, Kagami Saru. Chloe says that her mom and Adrian's father know each other. And she also told me that they wanted to join forces in some kind of way. Marriage, actually. She told me to watch out for them. Because they might be dangerous and try to break us up, Marinette says. Ale looks at her with a blank and incredulous look. They kind of want Adrian and Kagami to get married. To form kind of a powerhouse family. Kagami Surugi. Alia says slowly. It's as if she's tasting the name on her tongue for the first time to see how it feels if she likes it. Huh. Tell me more, she urges. Marinette shrugs. There's not much that I do know, honestly. Chloe just warned me that she was supposed to be Adrian's fiance because of some plan that their parents have, but their plans derailed. And they'll probably try to break us up because, you know, they're, they don't want to stop at that, she repeats. Ollie hums for a moment. I've never heard of her, honestly, she comments. Her last name sounds Asian, though. Maybe that's why. Let's search her up. For Adrian's father, of all people, to want to be connected to her, she's got to be a big deal, coming from a big family. Marinette totally agrees with Alia's statement, and they practically fly over to the computer to look up her name. Kagami said, wait. How do you spell it? It takes him a total of four tries to get her name correctly. Turns out, there was a silent T in, the, in her last name that they had totally overlooked. Finally, Marinette and Alia find her wiki page and they start to do a deep dive into it. Idly, Marinette thinks in the back of her mind that this situation is much like she had been in prior in high school. The borderline stalking her classmates and girls who could be relationship competition for a boy. Her friend liked her a boy that she personally thought was cute. She's... Oh, oh wow. Oh wow. She's accomplished. Alia blinks. That's almost an understatement. Kagami is brilliant. On her page, it announces many degrees and majors. Her fencing tournament wins and other notable skills. Her family seems to be well connected. Click on, her, click on her mom's name, Marinette says, pointing to the link. Alia moves the mouse over to it and suddenly Kugomi doesn't seem so impressive anymore now compared to her mother. Oh my god. What can't this woman do? Marinette mutters. Amen to that. I would be kicked out of that family so fast. Ollie agrees, reading up on the connections and wealth that the family had. Apparently they had descended from a shogun in Japan and has ties to nearly everything. Politics, fame, Hollywood, and education. They have everything at their fingertips. Well, everything except for Adrian. For him, for him, Marinette is standing in the way. Suddenly, all of the air escapes her lungs, and Marinette realizes that she had inadvertently made an enemy of a very powerful family. Is it just her? Or is the room spinning a little? Or a lot? Oh wow, Marinette says in a light voice, feeling a bit woozy. I feel like they're going to give me a fight. She bites her lip nervously. Kagami sure seems relentless if by going by the countless awards and accolades she has from contests and similar things. Wow, she... Alia Bruce, she is something. She's terrifying, Marinette says honestly. 
and her family wants her to marry Adrian. Not to steal him or date him, marry him. What am I going to do? His father is probably going to back her up. She panics. And I'm supposed to meet him next week. What if he springs it onto us? Hey, you two. It's you two no more. Adrian's going to marry Kagami, and I'm his father, so it will happen because we're very powerful. Bye, goodbye. She pulls out her hair. Alia squeezes her side with a sigh and worried expression. Oh goodness, she says. I don't think it'll be that bad. I do, Marinette says miserably. Hey, Alia says firmly. You know Adrian would not let him just walk all over you. His father or not, real relationship or not, he'll fight for you and make sure that you're okay. It's going to be awkward, sure, but it won't be awful, she says calmly. Marinette takes in a deep breath. I sure hope so. Marinette prays to whatever god is above that it will all be okay. But everything in her brain is saying that it is going to be terrible. <laughs>